Hi Dragonflies, welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. As you can see, I am back in my studio on the Oregon coast. The mobile edition of Dragonfly Spirit Studio will be back from time to time, but for now it's kind of nice to have my larger work tables and all my video equipment and broadband internet, so hopefully I'll be able to post videos more frequently than I have been. Today's video is another postcard paint along, but before I launch into the project, I'd like to address a question that's come up repeatedly about these postcard paint, paint alongs, and that is, what do I do to protect my postcard as it goes through the mail? And honestly, for me, the answer is nothing. Um, I'm usually traveling and I don't want to make a big production out of it, so I just take my chances and I've had pretty good luck. But it's a legitimate concern, so here are three simple ideas for things you can do to protect your postcard as it goes through the mail. You could spray it with two or three coats of a clear acrylic spray, for example, Krylon. You could coat it with some cold wax medium, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube already explaining how to do that, so I'll just put a link to one of those in the video in the description for this video. There's really no need for us to reinvent the wheel there. And the third thing you could do is put it in an envelope. And yes, you have to pay a little more postage, but if it's a really special postcard, maybe that would be something that you'd like to do. That's what I do with um, postcards that are really that turn out really nice. I actually glue them to the front of a do-it-yourself greeting card, use it for a longer letter or a special occasion, and put it in an envelope to protect it. So there are three things you can do to protect your postcards as they go through the mail. So let's get busy and make some postcards to send out. In today's project, we're going to see how to suggest skies like these, where the clouds are backlit and they have those bright white or silvery edges, possibly with a little blue sky peeking through or possibly just gray sky with the light coming through the clouds. And then we'll add different foregrounds to get a variety of different postcards. Let's begin with a sky that's all shades of gray, just to keep things simple for our first one. And when you look at a sky for a postcard, instead of trying to do a portrait of the sky and capture everything, we're going to try to get the feel of the sky and some of the big shapes. I'm going to begin by mixing a gray using ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And it's really hard when you're mixing these darker colors to tell what's going on when it's in a puddle on your palette. So, it's a good idea to bring some out onto a separate sheet of paper, just a scrap sheet of paper. It's a little bit bluer than I want. Add a little bit more. So I bring a little bit out and then I see what it looks like pale. I think I like that. So I'm ready to begin. As I look at the sky in this photo, I'm thinking to myself, just look for the large gray shapes. So I'm not going to paint clouds per se, I'm just going to paint big gray shapes and leave some areas white. To get that sort of softness that you have in the sky, one technique that I like to use is to spritz my page with water so that I have not completely soaked the entire paper, but I have little droplets and little areas of dry paper in between the droplets. And then I'm going to just take my brush. I like to lay it on its side because I think that helps get those kind of raggedy edges of the clouds. And I'm just looking for the big shapes here in this photo, big shapes of clouds. Since it's a postcard, I'm not going to try to paint every little detail of my sky. I'm just going to try to get the general character of the sky, get the feel of it. As I get closer to the horizon, as we come down farther on the page, we're seeing those clouds more on edge, so they look to us a little flatter, they're lined up more horizontally, and they're smaller. And now as I get down here, more towards those dark storm clouds, I'm going to just bring some strokes all the way across the page.
drop in some darks. And then when I get to the bottom of the page, I'm just going to pull whatever color I have on the page and on my brush right down the page until I just run out. And the reason I'm doing that is I may not be putting this particular foreground into this postcard. So I don't want to force myself to put the horizon in a particular place. Now if you have little whites like this, that's fine. You can just leave them. They may work into your landscape or you'll cover them up. Anything we put down here in the landscape is going to be quite a bit darker than our sky. All right, I'm going to now do the very same sky, but use a different technique. For this technique, I'm going to wet the entire page with clear water, all the way down, just like you're laying a wash. All right, when I've got the entire page wet, I'm going to paint my clouds the same way I did before, but because there's all this water on the surface, it will be a much softer look. But same idea, kind of looking at where are the big shapes, what are the big main shapes of these clouds on the page. And then I'm going to leave a fair amount of white in between because this is going to keep moving outward and I don't want to have them so close together that all the white disappears. So leave a little more white than you think you need to in between your clouds when you use the technique of wetting the entire page. And again, now down here where our storm clouds are, just drop in some darker color. And again, rinsing my brush. And this time I'm just going to kind of coax that down because this creates, once you add some water here, it creates a place for some of this pigment to move and these little streaks often work really well to make distant rain. So that's one of the advantages of this method. Let me just compare these two for a moment, let you look at both of them together. So you see we've got sort of two interpretations of the same sky, either one would work. Sometimes you want a little more energy and these like small white active shapes in the sky. Sometimes you want it to be softer. So two ways you can do that. Whoops. Now let's do one where there's a blue, some blue sky peeking through. So for some reason this becomes difficult because suddenly our brains want to think of this as clouds in front of a blue sky and what we really need to do is just do exactly what we did the last time, except instead of painting gray shapes with some white in between, we're going to paint gray shapes and blue shapes with some white in between. So we want to just look at the sky as a big blue shape or a series of blue shapes, and we're going to paint blue shapes and gray shapes and leave some white. So first we need a little bit of blue and I'm going to start with ultramarine blue and ultramarine, ultramarine or cobalt when it's straight out of the tube that's an unnaturally bright blue for sky. So the fact that we have a little gray out here is going to help us. I'm going to take a little of my gray and mix it in with my ultramarine blue and that calms it down enough that it seems more realistic as a sky color. I'm also going to add just a little bit more towards a turquoise tone just because I like that. Now I have cobalt turquoise on my palette. That's a pretty expensive color. So another one that would work is thalo blue. So I'm going to add a little thalo blue. And that will give me my sky color. Now the sky in the photograph is a variety of colors, a sort of a graded color. We're not going to do that because this is a postcard. We're going to keep it simple. <laughs> I'm going to go back and use the spray technique and I'm just going to try a different spray bottle. Sometimes if you're not having success with this, try different spray bottles. Some will work better for you than others. All right, 
So now I'm going to start with the blue shape in the corner there. Let's just kind of look at that blue sky coming in. And I'll leave a little white here and there because that will kind of give the sense of some smaller clouds. And over here we'll just make some smaller blue shapes here and there. And now we're going to make our gray shapes. Sort of the same idea as before, just looking at the big shapes that I'm seeing. Over on this side, these clouds are a little lighter, so I diluted my gray just a little bit. And then as they get lower in the sky, they're a little darker, so I'll go back and get some more of my stronger color. So you see, I'm not getting in here and trying to micromanage everything. I'm just getting the general idea of this sky. And again, down at the bottom, I'm just going to let the color come right on down so I'm not forced to have the horizon in a particular place. I feel like I want a little more dark down here by the horizon, so... I was running out of color. I have to mix a little more. If you have to mix a little more, sometimes it's good to check your color. Alright, I'm starting to fiddle so I think it's time to stop and we need to let these dry and then we will put some landscapes into them and have finished postcards. Alright, our three skies are dry and ready for us to add some foreground elements and turn them into finished postcards. And I just want to encourage you to take these techniques and play around with them using other skies for inspiration. Either skies you see out your window or reference photos you might have. You'll learn a lot about suggesting skies and clouds and you'll wind up with all these pre-painted skies that you can use when you're ready to make a postcard. Now you might be thinking, well now this part was fun but it feels like it's going to be kind of a chore to come up with something to put in the foreground for all these different sky studies. But instead of thinking of it that way, just tuck them away and the next time you go to sketch in the field or you go out traveling, you'll have skies that are already dry and you'll be able to jump right into the next phase of your painting. You'll also have all kinds of interesting skies if you happen to go out on a day where it's overcast or hazy or the sky is just plain blue and you would really like to have some clouds. So you can pick the sky that suits the mood that you would like to have in your postcard and jump right in painting the next step because this is already dry. That's a great time saver when you're sketching on location or traveling. So have fun with it and save them and they'll really be great base for beginning your postcards for other scenes. When you go to add foreground elements to make your sky study into a finished postcard, I have two tips for you. The first one is whatever colors I used up here in the sky to mix my sky colors, I'm going to use those same pigments to mix colors for my landscape. The reason is the color of the light in the sky reflects down onto the landscape in a subtle way. We're not usually conscious of it, but if we use some of these pigments as we mix our landscape colors down here, it will help the painting to feel like everything lives in the same light. It's all part of the same world. The second tip is when I'm trying to decide how I'm going to compose my scene and what I'm going to add down here, I like to start by asking myself, for this postcard, do I want the sky to be the star of the show, or is the sky going to be sort of a backdrop for something else that will be the main point of the postcard? 
So in this case, I really kind of like the sky. The sky kind of was the star of the show in the scene. So I think I want the sky to be the star of the show. So that means when I add landscape, I want to do kind of what, what you see in the reference photo, keep the landscape fairly minimal because all I am doing when I add the landscape is possibly suggesting a location. Maybe there's a recognizable landmark even, but I would keep it small. So, so indication of, of where this is if I want, or simply indication that there's a little landscape down here to kind of enhance the sky and make it feel like it has a ground to live above. So I'm going to keep this pretty minimal and I'm going to mix my colors using the same pigments I used up here. So I have ultramarine blue and I'm going to add a yellow to make my greens. So I want some bright greens. And then when it's time to have darker greens, I have all this existing color down here. So I think I will just activate it and that will give me the darker greens I need for my trees and so forth. And again, you can't tell very well on your palette what colors you have, so bring them out on another sheet of paper and test them. All right, let's put in a suggestion of some hills down here. And I'm just going to kind of follow along with what I'm seeing little rounded hills. There's a fair amount of variation in the greens in the actual hills in this reference photo, but again, this painting is about the sky. The sky is the star of the show, so I'm not going to get involved in doing too much down here. While this is still wet, I can add in just a few areas of darker green to kind of suggest some little shadowing here and there, some different types of vegetation. I don't really need very much. I don't want to do very much, but a little bit to sort of give it some form. And now before I can add that tree line and any of the little trees, I need to let this dry. To suggest that little fence line that sort of shows here and there as darker little green smudges, sometimes a flat brush is useful for that. So I'm going to test this idea over here and see if just kind of putting it down and smudging it Looks like it needs to be a little bit wetter to make that work, like that. So it keeps things more or less lined up. So I'm kind of putting it down on the page and giving it a little upward smudge as I lift it. So I'll do that here and there. It won't be the same each time, which is great. That's what I, I want is for it not to be the same each time. And that will kind of suggest a little of that tree line. You can do that also with a round brush. If you don't have a flat, uh, flat brush, you can do more of this kind of motion. So I'll do one of those right here. Kind of putting the brush down and sliding it. It's making a little bit bigger shapes, but that's okay. I just need, really just need to suggest a little contrast there. Let's put in a tree over here. I think I want a little bit darker shadow on some of these. So I'm just kind of playing around, making shapes that could be trees or shrubs. Because remember, the landscape down here just needs to be kind of minimal. To help make this feel more like it's foreground, if I do a little dry brush and kind of drag 
a little texture in the foreground that helps to bring that into the foreground. Let's add a few trees over here. It's nice to have a tree that goes a little above the horizon, kind of ties the land and the sky together. And I'm just kind of dotting my brush around. Not painting individual leaves, just painting Oh, that's wet down there, so let's let that dry before we try to make a trunk for that tree. Just painting what would be clumps of leaves, perhaps. Actually, that's okay, because we'll just let that bleed and smudge it a little bit, and it'll look like a shadow underneath the tree. And then if I want to have a little bit of a suggestion of some grasses in the foreground, we can do that same trick we've done before and splay out the brushes, uh, the bristles of our brush, and kind of do that kind of a motion. So, oh, maybe over here. Just a little bit. What I'm trying to do here is just give a little bit of difference to what's happening in the foreground along the front edge so that it feels like it's there's some closer elements, like I'm standing in this field. All right, as this tree dries, I can put in a little shadowing on the underside of a few of those clumps and make more of my trunk. Now, I painted my trunk with the very same green that I used to paint the tree, and that's actually usually what you see when a tree is at this distance in a landscape like this. There's a lot of green reflecting around, and the trunk really generally has a fairly greenish cast. So you don't need to mix a separate color. It looks unnatural if you mix a separate color. So just leave it like that. Now, as we've talked about before, all this business on the tape is very distracting, so don't judge your postcard until you pull the tape off. So there we have it, our um, first postcard. Very simple landscape, but the point of the postcard is the sky. So there's no need to do any more fussing around down here. This is enough to suggest the type of terrain, and that's all we need. Sometimes I like to see if my imagination suggests anything to me. And in this one, although sometimes this is nice to suggest rain, because it sort of crawled in both directions, right now I'm sort of seeing maybe some trees on a shoreline and the reflection in the water. So I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to go again with my same mixtures for my landscape colors. But in this case, I think since the whole sky is overcast here, I'm going to go with somewhat cooler greens. So I've got this bright green, but I'm going to mix it with my leftover gray and go with a cooler green. And maybe as some of this is even in the distance, I'll let most of the gray show through. So let's create some distant shoreline over here. And I'm using a fairly cool green. And I'm just going to kind of follow what's going on there already. This might be some closer, maybe a little island here. When I'm going to go into something that I'm going to paint over and I don't want to have a harsh edge, a lot of times I just smudge it with my finger. And then when I come back over that, it will blend in very nicely. And now, in the water, Let's drag that color down with our fingers to help suggest the streaky reflections that we get sometimes. Alright, now this has to dry here before I can put anything on top of it, but let's have a little more of that distant tree line. There'll maybe be a little island here that's kind of in front, so we'll put some more of that peeking through, smudging the edges as it's going to go underneath the trees that will become in the foreground, and then putting a little color in and dragging those reflections down into the water with our finger. So there are other ways to make reflections a wet and wet, but this is a nice quick way to do it in postcard in a postcard. 
get it done quickly. All right, so now let's start working from here and hopefully by the time we reach that point, this part will be dry. So these are going to be some bigger trees and their reflection and they're going to be closer. So let's use a little more color variation and somewhat brighter colors for those trees. Not as bright as that wild yellow, but a little brighter than that distant stuff. So, and I'm going to make them also a little smudgy edged. I don't do this a lot in my big paintings, but in postcards I use a lot of this finger smudging to get soft edges like that. Seems to work pretty well in a postcard. And we'll come on down, make the same kind of reflections in the water, but these trees are bigger so they'll come down farther. And we'll do the same kind of thing for our little island here. See how nice that is to so make like that smudgy little edge of a tree foliage. I want that to stand out from the background a little bit more. Put in a little more bright green and a little more dark green. The stuff in the foreground, the stuff that's closer to us, we will see both lighter and darker and brighter colors. So more value change, more change from light to dark, and more distinct bright color. All right. Now, all of these little islands and trees need to have some shadowing down at the base where they would be, where the sky would be, uh, light would be shadowed by the trees. So let's mix up some darker color. I'm using the same ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I want this to be a grayed dark green. And I'm going to, on this one, since it's still wet, I can drop in some of that shadow right now. And whatever goes on here will go down and we'll do the same thing here. We'll make this a little bit farther back. This has begun to dry, so we'll just use our smudging technique. I feel like I need some brighter green in this one too. Just here and there. And some of our shadow and then back here, we want some of the same thing, but paler, so I'm just going to dilute this color. And actually, I think since I have my flat brush out, I'm going to use my flat brush and that same sort of idea as before. I need to get it a little wetter. Where I just put it down on the waterline and kind of smudge upwards to make my shadowing. And then to finish it off, I'm going to suggest a little bit of just uh, ripples and also tone down some of the dark or some of the light in the water. So I'm using the same gray I used in the sky. I'm going to move my brush in sort of the way that water moves. Little, little S's. Oops. All right, it's a postcard, so we should stop fussing at this point, I think, and just pull the tape and see what we think. There's always the danger of fussing things to death, but I want to show you one little technique that seems to be pretty helpful in suggesting water. Sometimes in water, instead of having a reflection that's all dark like that, 
there'll be a little movement in the water and you'll catch a little glint of light from a small ripple. So I'm taking a flat brush that is rinsed and damp but not, not, not drippy and I'm going to just slide it like that and let it lift out a little color. A little goes a long way so don't do too much of this or it will sort of take over. There. So I think we'll call that one done. Let's move on and do the last one. For this one, I think I'd like to use these little bits of white and let them stay and suggest maybe some buildings or something in the landscape. Sort of like what I did with this one where these areas here that I left unpainted from the previous wash sort of suggest that there might be a road going through back here with maybe some buildings along it. I haven't painted any buildings. I didn't paint a road. I'm going to let the viewer's imagination uh, fill in the gaps there. But since we have these little white areas here, I thought, well, let's just use them and see if they can turn into buildings in our imagination. So to do that, what I'm going to do is paint a very similar scene as what I have here with some distant hills or mountains and then some closer range things. And when I get to this area, I'm going to do something that suggests that there's maybe a road in there that goes along this way. So let's start by doing our very distant hills or mountains. I'm using a gray leftover from before that's a little bit greenish which is fine and I think I'll add a little bit of blue to it. And I'm going to keep them pretty low. And I'm just going to invent the shapes. Maybe there's some of this kind of thing going on. Now down here, I'm simply going to rinse my brush and then soften that lower edge and just make sure I don't go over any of the white that I want to preserve. Come up to it, but not over it. These are pretty easy shapes to just avoid all right, now that needs to dry before we can layer on top of it. So let's give that a moment to dry and we'll do the next step. Okay, so behind any buildings or around any buildings that are this size, we would probably have some trees. So let's give ourselves some trees to frame those buildings. And again, I'm keeping everything more in these grayish tones because this sky looks like it's completely overcast. So, just suggesting the tops of some trees. Maybe these trees go behind that building. And then, again, I will just kind of rinse my brush and soften the lower edge. Let it kind of bleed down. And we'll go on over here with some other ones. Maybe there's a different shape. So I'm just kind of dabbling my brush along to make the upper edge of that tree line. And then I just kind of smudge it. But right here, where the lower edge is kind of an interesting series of shapes, I think I will let them be something else who knows what. So just kind of using our imagination. Who knows what's happening back here. And when I encounter these white areas, I'm just kind of letting my brush sort of avoid them but but without being too fussy about it because they aren't anything 
<laughs> they aren't anything. They're just little shapes. We're going to let the viewer's eye kind of figure out what those are. I have some of this bright green. Maybe we'll have a field over here that's a brighter green with some other stuff around it. I think maybe another closer hill right there. You see how I'm just kind of inventing stuff and the first few times you do that you may not invent particularly well but that's how you learn how to do this kind of invention so don't be afraid to give it a try and see what happens. And again we'll leave a little bit of stuff peeking through from before and it will help suggest that maybe there's a road or something back there. Sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of a orangey tone in the foreground or in a few locations to suggest maybe some bare earth. This warmer tone helps bring the foreground out uh, because again when you get closer to the viewer there is more color you can see more color it's not as dull the colors brighter so now we need to just drop in some darks to suggest some shadowing so I'm going to mix again my gray and then just flavor it with a little yellow to get a dark green and drop in Maybe there are some closer trees here. Use the shapes that your brush makes naturally to help you out. If it naturally makes a little pine tree shape, then make some little pine, pine trees. Why not? I think these maybe need a little darker. I really am just kind of dotting my brush around, looking for places where my imagination says there might be a little bit of a shadow or a little darker color. And then let's have a little bit of darker green in the foreground too. I think I want to break this shape right there and make it more like the side of a building and a, and a bright roof just because it felt like it was an awfully big white shape there and drawing more attention to itself than I wanted because I really kind of want the attention to be in the sky. So there we go three postcards with dramatic skies where the clouds have that backlighting and those beautiful white or silvery edges. I know that some of you might not be as confident about just making stuff up out of your imagination, so I will end this video with closer views of all three of these. So if you want to copy what I'm doing in the foreground more closely, you can. But feel free to just try this. You saw how quickly we were able to create these skies, so make a whole bunch of them, and then if one of them doesn't turn out, it's only a postcard. You'll learn a lot and you'll become much more confident at creating beautiful skies for your watercolors. These techniques work at a larger scale too. Helps to have a bigger brush, but basically the same process works from postcards all the way up. So have fun with it. I'll see you next time. Happy painting!